This month on Images. A football coach makes a triumphant return to College of DuPage and leads our chaps to victory. Professors and students sum up the gains of studying accounting at COD. And the work of photography students showcase moments of emotion and inspiration at the annual Easter Seals photo exhibition. All of that and more on this edition of Images. Welcome to Images. I'm your host, Rio Almaria, admissions representative at College of DuPage. Our program is a great way to stay connected with everything happening at your community college. Matt Foster was an assistant football coach at the College of DuPage in the 1990s. In 2013, he returned to fill the head coaching slot, bringing with him 30 years of coaching experience, a winning attitude, and unrivaled compassion for his student athletes. The new coach discussed training for success in all endeavors with a student's first, athlete's second attitude about his team, and why College of DuPage is an elite proving ground for both. I came back to uh, College of DuPage because it's, in my opinion, one of the elite institutions uh, in the United States. And I had an incredible experience uh, working here before and I, when the opportunity presented itself for me to come back, I jumped at it because I wanted to be a part of this team. And I didn't think it could get better, but when I came back I could not believe the changes that have happened here on campus, uh, the beautification, the facilities. Uh, the Culinary Arts Building, the Homeland Security Building, the Technology Building, um, to name a few, uh, are just phenomenal. The, the improvements to the BIC, uh, the Student Resource Center, I mean, I just, I was overwhelmed. Uh, the facilities are second to none. And I, and I think that's a reflection of the mission of the school. Um, it's a snapshot into what this school is about. It, it's about excellence. It's in every aspect. I don't care what program it is. It's about being the best that they're capable of being and keeping the student and their interests and their um, goals and dreams um, first and foremost. And, and you see it within the small setting in the classroom, but then you step outside and you see that in a bigger sense of the facilities. And I think the two go hand in hand. I believe there's basically three tenets to what I what I believe in: your faith, your family, and then academics. And then the last one would be football. Um, and that's why the kids are here. They're, those three things are critical. And then the one they enjoy the most, they have the most fun with, is down the ladder as far as the importance. And I really focus on the other three because they enjoy the football part. That's fun for them. Um, but the other ones are going to be the ticket for their success and, and just core tenets of what I believe. I enjoy recruiting because I enjoy meeting people and I enjoy um, finding a fit and really it's kind of like a marriage uh, to me. Um, what we're looking for isn't for everybody. I mean this is a tremendous institution, it's an elite institution, we're looking for elite people um, and I don't mean athletically and again it goes to my philosophy. The last on our staff's list as far as what we're looking for is the athletic part. There's a lot of good athletes out there. What we're looking at for most, first and foremost is character and, and kids that really want to be the best in who they are, best person they can be, the best student they can be, and then the best football player. And that ties directly into our philosophy. And that's the thing that we're really looking for is great people um, that really want to be a great student and really are willing to work and put in the time and put in the sacrifice and put others in front of themselves. Um, we find those people, we're going to have great teams and the school will have great kids here that will represent them well. The academics have to come first um, and, and it's very simple and it's very straightforward in football. I mean, a, a student athlete could get hurt at any moment because of the nature of the game. And the, the whole path to their success 
is paved with school. At any moment in time, they could get hurt and their football career could be over. And that's where their academics have to be first, and it has to be pushed by our staff. It has to be uh, a message that we back in, in a lot of different ways, both on and off the field, as far as discipline. If they're not up to the, doing their due diligence academically, that there's going to be repercussions for that. Um, and that also, on the other hand, that they're rewarded for um, excellence in the classroom because that's first and foremost. And the other part of that goes to when I recruit a kid, a young man coming in here for the first time, and I'm looking at him and his parents, the number one thing the parents want from me is that because they understand that the academics come first. And really, there's so many um, opportunities here assistance here with the learning lab and the library and all the all the different things that they can get the tutoring program that students can get here you have to really try you have to really try to fail um, and really that's what it is and as long as the students willing to work they're going to be successful here at the College of DuPage. For more information about College of DuPage athletics, academics, and everything in between, check us out on the web at cod.edu. Accounting professor Rukshad Patel tallies the gains of studying accounting at College of DuPage for all students across a variety of backgrounds and majors. When a student registers for an accounting class at College of DuPage, it can open up a whole career from them. Sometimes they come in undecided because they have multiple interests and this first accounting class sometimes gets them so interested that three years later they have a CPA. Students coming from high school take this first accounting class, find an interest, take business as a major or take accounting as a major and then proceed to enter the workforce and other times proceed to go to a four-year school. We love seeing successful students in accounting. At College of DuPage, our accounting classes are small size, 25 to 30 students in a class. Students have the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with their accounting professors and their peers. Classes are offered at convenient times, mornings, afternoons, evenings, so students can fit it in into their schedules. We offer degrees that allow students to transfer to four-year schools in their accounting programs and we offer degrees that allow students to enter the workforce. The workforce in our area really know the solidity of our program and the depth of knowledge that our students have when they pass out of the degree and it is a really rich environment when they have graduated with an associate degree that takes them into the workforce. We also have certificates that allow students to enter the workforce and are very popular, the various certificates and we talk to students and advise them as to the direction they may want to take. Many students come back from university during the summer and register for an accounting class in the summer at the College of DuPage. Uh, it is small classes and a personal relationship with your teacher and your peers and they are delighted to take those classes and go back to the university and have fulfilled the credits that they're required to take at their university. We would love to see local high school students come to COD and register for an accounting class and fulfill the credits for their business classes at their four-year university. We find students do very well and speak very well of our classes and are really happy with the knowledge that they take and therefore the knowledge that they can build when they go to their four-year universities. For more information about accounting courses, certificates, and degrees offered at College of DuPage, visit us on the web at cod.edu. Exciting things are happening at Waterleaf. Hi, I am Jean Piolo, General Manager of Waterleaf Restaurant, and I invite you to come to Waterleaf for a lunch that is sophisticated and relaxed. We are now offering a new affordable and, of course, delicious lunch menu with family items all prepared with a special touch 
it's certain to make your dining experience far from your average lunch. Savor or take on some of our favorite dishes. Macaroni and cheese, cup salad with your choice of dressing, soup and salad combo, beef brisket sandwich with caramelized onion and horseradish mayonnaise, a trio of sliders consisting of barbecue pork with crispy onion, fried chicken with pickles, and a filet with blue cheese, plus much, much more. Join us for lunch at Waterleaf and experience modern fine dining. Where the focus is on great food and service in the comfort of a down-to-earth, informal setting. I am looking forward to welcoming you. You will love it. Each spring, students in Terry Vitaco's photography class work on capturing images for local documentary assignments. As a final project, Students photograph the daily lives of special needs infants through adults served by Easter Seals DuPage and the Fox Valley region. Select photographs are chosen by a jury for display in the Easter Seals lobby. The collaborative exhibition is a wonderful hands-on learning experience for students and an inspiration for Easter Seals families and parents of special needs children. This is the 14th annual Easter Seals exhibition, which is a collaboration between my photojournalism students, portrait students, and people we call special forces, who are students that have graduated from the program but still are willing to participate and love to participate in this project where they photograph children with Easter Seals. Our goal is to enable infants, children, and adults with disabilities to achieve their maximum independence. That's our mission. We're very grateful for their partnership and it's one of my favorite nights of the year because it focuses on our mission and our abilities instead of our disabilities. Photojournalism is about people and telling stories about people and educating the public about real, you know, true stories about life. And this project is a perfect way for my students to learn how to do that. You know, we cover a lot of assignments during the class that are just a one-time assignment, but this is a project that they work on for five weeks where they have to actually get to know the family, introduce themselves, make themselves available, and get the family comfortable with them so that they can be their, themselves, be their real true selves. And so what we find is when we see these stories, the essence of the people comes through. You know, the children, the families, their struggles, their joys. So it's just a really great project. This is my first year um, doing this project, yeah. And I've learned that, <laughs> that these kids are just amazing. I don't have a lot of experience with special needs kids and just their energy is just contagious. They have such a positive energy about them and I just learned that, you know, Life is awesome and life is short and you just have to enjoy every moment that you can. It's, it's fun meeting these families and um, I've been uh, connected with Easter Seals for 30 years because my wife worked here. So, you, you know, these are wonderful families who have kids that need therapy. They come here and get therapy and they improve their lives. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful story. It's, these kids are a circus, you know, six, one, and four. They're just constant motion. So mom helped uh, corral them for a couple of different moments. And uh, this is one of the moments that Zach and his dad were going to have a little foot race, and they were trying to get the other two to pay attention to it. My orchestrating didn't work out nearly as well as the spontaneous picture did. It was, real, it was really, really fun. I would, uh, he has two older sisters and we went to the park for an afternoon and um, it, he's very energetic and he was a lot of fun, a lot, really good subject. He liked getting his picture taken, so he was really fun. Caleb loved the camera, he loved the sound of the click, he loved the flash, so he was very fascinated and easy to photograph and he smiled almost all the time. 
Um, busy little guy, but I think I had about three or four visits. Um, try to catch him during therapy and just kind of really see what his life was like and what the family's life was like and how that they managed to um, get him all the things that he needed and, and try to learn how to communicate with him since his language has really been delayed. And um, I learned a lot about him and the family and, and they were just truly amazing. I'm not creating the story, I'm just depicting the story and trying to capture you know, all the different elements of their life. It's an amazing opportunity for us to take what we do every day and um, put it into photos. So it really helps us tell our stories. And we all know that a picture tells a thousand words and that's really what happens every day when someone new walks through our doors. They really get the opportunity to see the possibilities um, for their child and their family. And it's warm and welcoming at a time when the families need that support. And I love it when kids and families get to see their picture and also the photographer that they worked with because it's amazing how many connections are formed just through the experience. And the, the kids especially, when they see their picture up on the wall and they get to be stars for the next year, um, it's really, it's fun and it inspires us every day. For more information about COD's photography program, visit their pages on the web at cod.edu. Coming up next on Images, Waterleaf Restaurant's executive chef, Nadia Tilkian, shares her secret for beating winter's chill with the comfort of a hearty homemade soup. Exciting things are happening at Waterleaf. Hi, I am Jean Piolo, general manager of Waterleaf Restaurant, and I invite you to come to Waterleaf for a lunch that is sophisticated and relaxed. We are now offering a new affordable and, of course, delicious lunch menu with family items, all prepared with a special touch, certain to make your dining experience far from your average lunch. Savor or take on some of our favorite dishes. Macaroni and cheese, cup salad with your choice of dressing, soup and salad combo, beef brisket sandwich with caramelized onion and horseradish mayonnaise, a trio of sliders consisting of barbecue pork with crispy onion, fried chicken with pickles, and a filet with blue cheese plus much, much more. Join us for lunch at Waterleaf and experience modern fine dining, where the focus is on great food and service in the comfort of a down-to-earth, informal setting. I am looking forward to welcoming you. You will love it. Thank you all for coming. When I do my cooking classes, I try and focus on products that you can get easily. We don't want to send you to 200 stores, and we want to do things that are simple that you don't have to spend a lot of time with because everybody has kids, everybody is running, everybody is working. So um, I try and focus on things like chicken stock, very easy to make. It's not a two-day trial for you like a veal stock. Um, all these soups are very hearty. Um, things that you, they're low maintenance for you. Uh, things that you don't have to spend your whole day constantly stirring, <laughs> like a roux or you know whatnot, yet they're gonna really satisfy your family. We're gonna start out with a basic chicken stock. I cleaned some chickens yesterday. I'm gonna show you really quickly how to clean one, just so that you can do it yourself at home. All these things can be made ahead, which is great. That way if you, you know, don't have the time one day, you can do it the day ahead. And usually soups are better the second day anyway after they've had a chance to sit and cure. We have our chicken. Uh, we like the Amish ones. They don't have the hormones. They're cleaner tasting. They're great chickens. They're a little bit meatier because of the way they raise them. Um, I just start by running a knife down the breastbone because really I want the bones 
with the most gelatin, which are like back bones, leg bones, neck, and wings. And if you get the whole chicken as opposed to chicken bones, which you can always do something with the other parts of the chicken. So I just take off a side of chicken, which you can roast later, or you can use it in soup or do whatever you want to do. And then the carcasses we can use for, obviously, stock. <clears throat> And you're just going to feel your way around the, the bones. And you can always just kind of break it like that if you can't see so well to see where they break apart naturally. That way you're not struggling. And so what you end up with is your carcass. For this, we use about four pounds. I like to take stock and I freeze them in baggies and then that way when you just want to pull it out for whenever, you know, you have, you're cooking for two, you're cooking for six, you know, you can pull out your stock out of the freezer and use it as need be. So you want to take all the scrap pieces We have uh, mirepoix, which is always going to be 50% onions, a little bit of leek, carrots and celery, and you don't have to cut them up really nicely. Um, I ask that you peel them because stock tends to get bitter when you don't peel your vegetables. And then we always have uh, thyme, parsley, bay leaf, and peppercorn. Um, we always put our white wine in because the acid helps bring out the gelatin. And we always start with cold water. Um, when you start with hot water, the more gelatinous the stock is, the better quality it is. Um, cold water brings gelatin out of the bones. Hot water just kills it. So always cold water. Anytime we make stock. And we're just going to simmer this for a couple of hours. Like bring it to a boil, simmer it. You're going to skim off any fat or scum that comes to the top to so give you a nice clean stock. I'm going to check the chicken stock. As you, I hope, can see, there's uh, some, I guess the professional term is scum <laughs> coming up. And this is just any impurities out of the vegetables, um, you know, any blood or protein. And we just take that off and just to ensure we get a nice, clear stock. And as you can see, it hasn't been going that long, so the color is going to be really golden as opposed to, you know, dark. Um, depending on what you're making, this is fine too. Uh, I just think it has more flavor the longer you let it go. But if you're making like a sauce and you want to keep it kind of white, then you know, I would just let this go a little longer and stop there. Uh, we do the same for fish stock, you know, just bones of like, say, a nice white fish like halibut, something that's not really strong, you know, a nice golden, beautiful stock. Um, and then for a veal stock, you know, we roast bones. That's like a two-day process to get a really good veal stock. We're going to strain the stock to show you a nice light one. So we have our chicken stock, which is done. And like I said, for some things I really like, you know, would prefer a dark chicken stock. But for, you know, if you want to make a sauce and you want to keep it kind of white, this is okay too. but we like to do it through a really fine strainer. Um, sometimes I'll take a coffee filter, like those cone ones, and I'll strain stocks and sauces through there as well. And this one doesn't have a lot of fat on it, which is good. Um, usually I cool down a stock and then I will just kind of take off whatever fat's on top and discard it. Unless, of course, you want to cook with it. You can always cook with chicken fat too. Can you smell the chicken stock?
Accounting is an essential area of study for all business majors. For Dana Richards, a small business owner and marketing major with plans to transfer to a four-year institution, the gains of studying accounting at College of DuPage have her projecting growth in her professional and personal life. I came to College of DuPage because I was very familiar with it. I'm from the area and I've heard great things about it. Um, my brother was a student here as well and had a great experience. It was very affordable for me and I had a great assortment of classes um, that I could choose from so it was really good with my schedule. I immediately signed up for um, accounting my first year here and I took it because um, it was for my degree I needed it but also I took it immediately because I wanted to directly apply it to what I was doing. Besides going to school here at COD, um, I have a wedding photography business, so that keeps me busy majority of the year, especially in the summers, which is really nice to go to school then. So it's really convenient here with my schedule as well. And then with the accounting, I could directly apply that to what I'm doing in my business as well. My experience with the instructors in the accounting department has been um, beyond great. But what was really nice is that our classes weren't too large so that I could always feel comfortable asking questions in class, raising my hand, and then afterwards there was time for me to um, have one-on-one -on -one questions and answers, um, which is really valuable as well. Here at COD, I feel like over my past few years that I've attended, um, I've gained a lot of um, valuable resources and learned a lot of valuable things for where I'm going, not only for my future in education, but for my business and things that I could apply right away. Um, and also I'm taking other courses that aren't even directly for my major, they're just things that I needed to learn right away for me and that I could directly apply um, and things that weren't too expensive of classes for me to take for my personal interests that I felt like um, I was able to do that at the same time as pursuing my major. My future after COD, I'm definitely studying business in order to um, soak it up and learn for myself and my own business. So I'm actually going for marketing, so that's what I'll be transferring out for um, to really know how to promote myself. Um, so this was I got a great base for where I'm going and I'm really excited to see where I'm headed after this as well. For more information about accounting courses, certificates, and degrees offered at College of DuPage, visit us on the web at cod.edu. There's always so much happening at College of DuPage. Be sure to watch Images every month to stay on top of it all. Until next time, I'm Rio Almaria.